There isn't a bigger boom or bust player in the 2021 NFL Draft than Malik Willis. His elite mobility and good arm make for a potential pro superstar, but his lack of collegiate competition, inconsistencies, and lack of anticipation are all reasons to worry. So what will be the difference between Malik Willis being a boom or a bust in the pros? Malik Willis grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, where he attended Roswell High School. As a senior with the Hornets, Willis threw for 2,562 yards and rushed for 1,033 with 37 total touchdowns. He was a three-star recruit, considered the 21st best athlete in the class and the 35th best prospect in Georgia. Willis decided to commit to play at Auburn. For the first three years of his collegiate career, Malik Willis barely saw the field. In two years at Auburn, he threw just 14 passes for 69 yards and a touchdown, along with 309 rushing yards and two touchdowns. The lack of playing time led Willis to transfer out to Liberty, and he had to sit out the 2019 season due to transfer rules. The following season, Willis took over the starting quarterback role for the Flames and led them to a 10-1 record and a Cure Bowl victory over Coastal Carolina. That season, Liberty actually came and visited Virginia Tech, and I experienced one of the most heartbreaking losses I've ever seen. Liberty set up for a field goal with the game tied at the end of the game. Almost no time was left, and Tech ended up blocking it and returning it for a touchdown. But they had called a timeout before the play. They lined back up, the Flames got another shot, and their kicker hit a career high to win the game. It was so brutal, and I can't even begin to explain how bad that felt. Liberty regressed a good bit in 2021, going 8-5 and five and winning the Lending Tree Bowl, but Willis did set career highs with 2,857 yards and 27 touchdowns. Everyone knows the biggest positive in Malik Willis's game his mobility. He's fast, shifty, and can slash opposing defenses with his legs. You can draw up a design QB run for him if you wish, and he has a good enough build to take hits in the pocket and down the field. Plus, he has that competitive fire and is willing to take the hits, and he's never scared to escape the pocket. For a mobile guy, he has great arm strength, and he can attack anywhere on the field, along with a solid deep ball. Willis is good when the play breaks down, and can even make off-schedule throws and adjust accordingly. But sometimes, he gets himself in trouble. He works backwards in the pocket sometimes and often makes plays even worse. Willis has a long way to go on his timing. He never anticipates and he usually just waits for receivers to get open and that probably won't work in the pros. At Liberty, it was also a super easy system and the passing attack does leave some questions with his football IQ and if he can really understand defenses past just a three round tree. One of the big concerns or questions when it comes to Malik Willis is what he might look like against elite competition. It almost mirrors when a guy like Carson Wentz or Trey Lance was coming out of North Dakota State, or even Josh Allen, who despite playing in the FBS, was still questioned because it was the Mountain West. Liberty is in the FBS, but it's an independent. Their best win in 2021 was probably North Texas, who play in Conference USA and went 6-7. and seven. That's not particularly ideal. The only ranked team Liberty faced was number 16 Ole Miss, and uh, it went awful. It went really bad for Willis. He completed just 16 of 25 passes for no touchdowns and three interceptions. That's going to be the game that scouts are going to circle as a red flag. He didn't start a single game at Auburn, and Willis hasn't yet proved that he he can play against elite competition. Of course, with that comes a big caveat. He hasn't been playing alongside great players either. There are two different ways to look at it, but either way, the same sentiment rings true. Malik Willis hasn't yet proven that he can play against elite players. With what he lacks in terms of film against good competition is made up by the potential of what Willis could become. The NFL has swung to the mobile quarterback archetype and the need for an elite quarterback who can do it all. There are only really two types of quarterbacks that can help you win a Super Bowl. Elite or cheap. Willis is going to be cheap early on, but he has the tools to turn into elite. When he gets out into the open field, Willis can mirror a former prime Michael Vick, the way he shifts through defenders and makes defenses look silly. Couple that with a good arm on paper, and he has all of the tools that could be put to good use if he can figure out his inconsistencies and timings. But he has to be developed correctly. A lot of Malik Willis's pro career might be on the faith of being developed. If he gets put into a mess that Dwayne Haskins was put in in Washington,
Washington or a Trevor Lawrence mess in Jacksonville last season, it's going to be tough for it to work out. However, if he lands in the perfect spot, like Mac Jones did with the Patriots last year, or Patrick Mahomes did in Kansas City, Willis may turn into an NFL superstar. But with his issues and huge boomer bust potential, development will mean everything for Malik Willis. Most analysts put Malik Willis as one of the top 32 players in the draft, but usually towards the back half. But of course, because he's a quarterback, he's going to come at a premium. His draft position in mock drafts have been all over the place from the Lions at 2 all the way to the Steelers at 20. Either way, it appears that it'll be a two-headed race between him and Kenny Pickett to see who goes off the board first. Detroit is the first realistic landing spot at 2, followed by the next 11 picks where Willis could potentially go. The Texans, Jets, and Giants all have two picks during the span, and all may need a quarterback. The Panthers, Falcons, and Seahawks all have a very clear need at quarterback as well, and the Commanders and Vikings both have their guys for 2022, but likely aren't the long-term options. Both the Eagles and Saints have two selections from 15 to 20, and could be looking for a quarterback despite the presence of Jalen Hurts and Jameis Winston. The furthest Willis may slide could be 20 to the Steelers where Mike Tomlin would almost certainly stop his slide. I do have a lot of worries with Malik Willis, and if I was a team looking at him as my potential suitor, there's a lot of factors that would probably go into that. He is, again, a very boom or bust type guy and a very, very risky pick. When it comes to what you'd have to actually use a pick on to get him, which will end up being very high, versus what could happen and how bad he could end up busting, it is very, very concerning, and it's going to take the right organization to make the right decision. When it comes to his playing days at Liberty, I think one of the fair worries is the competition and who he's played against. I mean, the only real game that we have to look at from last year is that Ole Miss game, and Malik Willis played terrible. I mean, that's going to be one of those games that teams are going to watch back through, scouts are going to watch back through, even Malik Willis is going to watch back through, just to kind of rewatch, see where everything went wrong, and Ole Miss was a fantastic, fantastic football team last year, but Liberty was awful in that game, and especially Malik Willis does. That being being said, when it comes to him not having the same kind of weapons as Matt Corral did at Ole Miss, I think that there is a valid point to be said that Malik Willis will be better once he gets around better players. I think the same kind of thing ran true with Zach Wilson last year. People were saying that he was playing at BYU. Well, yeah, he wasn't playing with great people. He only had really Dax Milne. He leaves BYU and now he's playing around better players in the pros. It's a big reason to worry and it's a really, really fair worry, but I think just with the potential of Malik Willis, he has the potential to be the best quarterback and have the best pro career of anybody in this draft if things can work out and he goes to the right organization. And that alone is a big enough reason to take a guy like Malik Willis, even if he can bust out. The fact that he could turn into the best quarterback of this draft is a big enough reason to take him. When you watch him play, he is one so much fun to watch. But like I said, he kind of resembles that kind of Michael Vick type figure, the way he's shifting through defenses, making people look ridiculous in the open field. And then you turn around and he still has this really good arm and can deliver the ball on time and make the right reads. And so that alone, Malik Willis has that potential, but he's still a big boomer Gus guy and he needs to be developed. If he ends up going to an organization that really just doesn't know how to one treat a quarterback or there's so many distractions, like I mentioned Jacksonville, like all you had was distractions last year for Trevor Lawrence. Luckily, that's Trevor Lawrence, one of the safer guys from last year's draft. But if you have that with a different guy, a project type guy, imagine if, you know, a Josh Allen had to deal with that or, you know, Trey Lance was dealing with a mess in San Francisco. Those guys guys that are expected to come in and kind of need some time, if they get put in the wrong spot, they're going to be a disaster. And I am worried about that when it comes to Malik Willis. I think the best fit for Malik Willis is pretty clear. I do think it's the Atlanta Falcons. You know, he's the hometown Atlanta kid. Now, I do think the Falcons are actually going to go after Kenny Pickett and not Malik Willis. But I think that overall for Malik Willis, what would be the best for him would be Atlanta, born and raised Atlanta kid. Maybe the Falcons kind of use that a little bit. You know, everybody loves the hometown kid. And I think he'd be a really good fit for the Falcons. They're looking for a quarterback after getting rid of Matt Ryan. Arthur Smith is probably going to be on the prowl looking for his next QB. And I think Malik Willis can actually be properly developed in Atlanta to some degree. So I think that could actually be a good landing spot and work out pretty well. In terms of worst fit, I do think it's actually the commanders. As a Washington fan, I think Malik Willis would be a really bad fit in Washington, simply put, because of everything I've talked about development. You know, Washington's shown nothing to know how to develop a quarterback over the years. It's nothing but distractions and the 
front office, with the coaching staffs, with everything. There's so many things going on in Washington, and none of that really falls on the development of players, or especially if you have a rookie quarterback like Malik Willis come in, you're automatically worried about, you know, how Dan Snyder and everything else is going to be a distraction. The focus isn't going to be put on Malik Willis. The focus is going to put on whatever new disaster Washington is dealing with that week. In terms of most likely, I've done a lot of thought into this, and I actually think in terms of Malik Willis going to somewhere that can actually develop him and a team that is in need of a quarterback, I think the Seattle Seahawks make a ton of sense. I think there's a chance he's still there when they come up, and I think that after getting rid of Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll's obviously going to be looking for a guy like Malik Willis. He fits kind of the similar type thing as Russell Wilson, a lot more mobile. Wilson maybe with a better arm, but they still kind of fit kind of the same role of that super mobile quarterback, making plays with his feet, extending plays, and I think he could actually be a pretty good fit in Seattle, and I think that he could develop pretty well in Seattle and become a pretty good player. Ultimately, there's a lot of questions with Malik Willis, and I think a lot of them are fair questions when it comes to especially competition, and he does have a lot of things that he needs to fix up, like with the anticipation and inconsistencies, but I think, especially with those last two, they can easily be fixed if he goes to the right team and is getting coached by the right people and can figure things out. And at the end of the day, Malik Willis could go to a bad organization and completely flame out and be horrible, or he could go somewhere perfect like Mac Jones did in New England and turn into a superstar. And that's why he is the biggest boomer bust guy and probably scares the hell out of NFL teams looking for their next quarterback.